principal. I am your host, Matt Carafa. We are here today on location from the beautiful Lions Club in Memphis, Michigan. I'm here once again with my co-host, Mr. Adam Rickert, the voice of Memphis. Mr. Rickert, how are you today, sir? Doing good, doing good, staying safe, and got to protect that voice, you know, that's, that's what's going on here. I see that, I see you've got your, your uh, what do they call that mask there, the M97 mask? And something, uh, N95, I think? N95 mask, very nice, very nice. Um, staying safe uh, out there on your travels? Yep, yep, uh, there's a lot of uh, talking to parents, keeping uh, kids updated, writing lessons, those kinds of things, and other than that, not a whole lot. So. Well, the governor says we have to stay at home, but we're filming on location today to bring you all the news from Memphis Junior Senior High School on Coffee with the Principal. What's new around the hive? Our first thing is an update on our online learning system. We are, we are in the third week of that. Uh, we've started, it's going pretty well so far. There's going to be a couple of snags here and there. Obviously, there have been, whether it's technology issues or some people maybe having trouble understanding how to use everything online but we're all here for you we're all here to help you um, you can access contact information from the junior senior high school staff on our home research page which is memphisk12.org slash jrsr dash high uh, thank you for your patience and willingness to work with us during this difficult and unprecedented time we have uh, really appreciated the participation and uh, things are going pretty well in a lot of classes Yes, they are, and, and your teachers are always uh, updating that home resource page with office hours, um, lesson plans, uh, and, and each, each Monday and Wednesday of every week, teachers will deliver online lessons through their Google Classroom. Tuesdays and Thursdays are check-in days for your teachers, and Friday is kind of a mix-up of, of everything, a little mash-up. You can contact your teacher, you can get some extra schoolwork done, a lot of different things. So that's our online learning uh, update for this month. Um, but things again, things are going well. If you have any issues, please reach out to us on our home resource page, or you can email myself or Mr. Corbett directly uh, for any updates. We've got a lot going on for our class in 2020. We definitely don't want to get them lost in all this. This is supposed to be a huge time in their lives, and it still is. It's just we're making all of those things a little bit differently, but we're making them work. So we've got some gradual gradu graduation activities to include the following. May 14th, we've got virtual senior class student parent meetings, 6 to 7 p.m. May 28th, from 6 to 7 p.m., we have virtual honors convocation and scholarships. May 29th is our seniors' last day. So while we'll continue with the online learning for the other three grades, seniors are done at May 29th. So you still get out a little bit early. That's good for you. Uh, it's exciting. July 11th. We are planning, and this is still subject to change, but right now we're looking at July 11th as an abbreviated graduation ceremony on the football field at 11 a.m. and a senior barbecue ceremony from 12.30 to 2 p.m. August 2nd is scheduled to be our prom. We don't have a venue or a time yet, but we will get that information to you as soon as possible. And then July 12th is our backup date for the graduation ceremony if, if July 11th doesn't work out, if it's raining or something like that on that day. So again, these are tentative plans. They can change, uh, but right now those are the dates that we have set up. Yeah, and Mr. Rickert mentioned those days for the May 14th and the May 28th virtual meetings for our seniors. Information on those meetings will be going out to our senior families uh, later this week and early that week of May 14th uh, for you to join those virtual meetings. Also, one thing we didn't mention was that on May 31st, which is our original date for graduation, Project Graduation, which is a group of uh, parents and guardians of our seniors each year, uh, Project Graduation is putting on a senior vehicle parade in honor of their graduation, which would, would have been on the 31st. Uh, more de details to come, but basically what that means is Seniors, paint up your cars, decorate them up nicely to show your pride in the class of 2020, and we will parade through the town. Uh, we're talking with Officer Gunnery and the Memphis Police about a, a, a route we can use, uh, and we will even circle it through the circle drive at the school so that uh, the teachers and staff can say goodbye to their senior class uh, before the um, graduation ceremony in July. So that is the Senior Vehicle Parade, May 31st. So a lot of really good things coming up for our seniors. 
Again, we want to honor you. Um, another thing you can do is check out our Facebook page and our Twitter accounts as each day through the month of May we're honoring a different senior. Uh, also, if you go to our website at www.memphisk12.org, uh, our, our scroll we have there, it's a, a scroll presentation, has each one of our seniors and a slide about each one on there as well. So those are a lot of cool things we're doing to honor our seniors coming up. For sure, for sure. Um, lastly is our locker material update. So our custodial staff has emptied all the items from each student locker into plastic bags and it has labeled each bag according to locker number. So that's a huge job for our custodial staff. We gotta, they don't get enough appreciation. They deserve some. So yes, sir. great job. Congratulations on the great job they've done. And be sure if you're a student to, to be thankful to them for sure. Um, parents and students will have the opportunity to pick up these items over the course of two days. So it was yesterday, May 5th, uh, junior high items were available at 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then today we did it for high school, um, same time period. And we're going to have a couple more of those dates coming up, right? Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, we do have a, a bonus day set up right now. So next Wednesday, uh, that's May 13th, between 5 and 7 p.m., so for those parents or students that may be working during the day, they couldn't make it up uh, on May 5th and 6th for locker item uh, cleanup. Next week, May 13th, from 5 to 7 p.m., we will have students uh, locker materials available for junior high and high school students both. Pull onto the Circle Drive at Memphis Junior Senior High School. Stop near the flagpole. One of our staff members will come out and get to you. We'll get your name, locker numbers, and get your belongings out to you. Um, I do want to update that gym lockers have not yet been cleaned out. Uh, we are working on a, a process for that. As soon as we figure that one out, we'll let you know. Um, and also another thing people are asking about a lot about Mr. Rickard is yearbooks. Uh, yearbooks are going to be delivered soon, along with caps and gowns for our seniors. Once they're delivered, we'll let everyone know how you can pick those items up. We don't have them yet, but once they're here, we'll have them, and then we'll get them right out to you guys. So. Uh, Yearbooks, caps and gowns, locker items, gym lockers, all those things, we're still trying to roll them out to you. And again, as we ease some restrictions here, as the governor eases some restrictions, we can get a little more open to what we're doing. Right now we're working under some real slim parameters right now to get you your stuff. Uh, so we're trying, and again, our custodial staff are working extra, extra hard, our paraprofessional staff, our teachers, you know, everyone, support staff is working very hard to get you your items. So those should be coming out to you uh, fairly soon. Um, Mr. Ricker, do you have any updates for Mr. Oki? I know Mr. Oki has been working really, really hard behind the scenes with um, the athletic programs and the boosters on some things. Do you have some, any updates from him? Yeah, well, first of all, you know, keeping with our theme of, of seniors and how important they are and, and how much we want to acknowledge them, uh, Bradley Diener was selected to the Macomb County All-Academic Basketball Team. So, uh, great job for Bradley. He was recognized in uh, the Macomb Daily and around Macomb County along with other peers from the area. So um, he had fantastic grades all year. Yes, he did. His throughout all of high school, just one of those students who's always, uh, always giving it his best effort, whether it's in the classroom or on the court. Bradley also had another article in the Macomb Daily uh, along with Zach Malinowski, his classmate, they were featured in an article in the Macomb Daily about our Memphis bass fishing team. And actually, champion bass fishing team. Champion bass fishing team. That's great. I might need some tips for them because I think I'm going fishing in the river tomorrow. Oh, okay. It's supposed to be a very good day according to the calendar. So. Well, I saw Brad uh, earlier today. I should have asked him to, to call you, but I, but I, didn't, I didn't know you needed him yet. Oh, hey, that's all right. That's I'll all right. I'll reach out to him and let him call you. Or maybe I'll make, let him know to call you. <laughs> all right. Hey. Um, but also we've been turning on our, our football lights every Friday at 8 p.m. for 20 minutes, 20 for the 2020 seniors. So in, in Memphis, on our Memphis seniors, um, our football lights are turned on every Friday night. So be sure to drive by and uh, maybe just take a look at it. We've got a sign outside the school too saying we all miss you guys because we definitely do. It's not the same. Very, very, um, very interesting uh, uh, idea that Mr. Oki had to come into the um, school area to go into the football field and to light up the field for 20 minutes uh, every Friday in honor of our seniors. Very cool, 2020, you know. Uh, and again, we talked about it earlier, it's gotta be tough on those seniors sometimes to have their senior year interrupted the way it has been. Yeah, yeah, and it's still, you know, it's, it's the best time of year for, for teachers and students. At least for me, it was always the most exciting time of the year. And unfortunately, it's 
all this all this craziness going on right now, it's tough for our seniors, and I can't imagine how tough it would be if when I was in high school, I was a senior, if I had to go through this, but we're doing everything we can to make everything special for you guys. So uh, if you have any suggestions or anything like that too, uh, we, we want to make this uh, one of the most special times of your lives because this is you deserve it. That's what it's supposed to be. That's what it's supposed to be indeed. Thank you, Mr. Rickert, for some of the updates with, uh, to what's going on around the hive. Next up, we'll have our special guest, Officer Gunnery. Stay tuned. with the principal in beautiful downtown Memphis at the Lions Club. I'm joined now by a special guest, re special reoccurring guest, I guess you could say, Officer Gunner. Officer Gunner, how are you? Doing well, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm staying nice and warm by this fire over here. Yeah, I forgot the marshmallows. I forgot the marshmallows. You should have brought them. I should have told you. Next time. Next time. Next time, marshmallows. Officer Gunnery, uh, any updates from town? I, I know you've been uh, in touch with the chief of police and talked to some of the other officers who work uh, evenings and, and, and daytimes around town. Any updates uh, around town that maybe uh, are, are, are notable to talk about today in coffee? No, it's actually it's actually been fairly quiet, which is a good thing, uh, especially with a lot, you know, you look at the newspapers or they think that domestic violence, all that will go up because there's so much time being spent at home, but uh, we've been fairly quiet here, so very fortunate on that front. And I did hear that the ice cream shop is now open in town. Yep, that's always a bonus. Is that, yes. uh, is that a true statement? I believe that is true. Uh, and um, I think that's something we need to do soon. Maybe get get up there and get a couple flavors. Yeah, so we can do it absolutely. Yeah. Officer Gunnery, recently you were here at the junior senior high school, or across the way there at the junior senior high school for parking permit exchange. Yes. Uh, how did that go? You had two days that you worked on it. How did that go? Yeah, it went really well. It was uh, it was seamless. Uh, it, and it was also nice to see a lot of kids, uh, a lot of smiling faces. Everybody looked healthy. You know, with everything going on, you. You hope that everybody remains healthy and uh, yeah, a lot of smiles and it was, it was good to see some of the kids. So so for those uh, students, I'm sure you didn't collect all the parking passes, did you? No, no, quite a few. Quite a few, yeah. there's quite a few out there still. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so for those students uh, or parents that are interested in returning that parking permit and, and, and for, for those of you out there, our parking permit system is pretty much set up where at the beginning of the school year, if you want to park in the lot, you give us a $10 deposit. We give you a plastic parking sticker, or excuse me, tag to hang in your window. Uh, at the end of the year, we ask for that tag back so we can go through our inventory. We give you your $10 deposit back. Officer Gunnery, are you going to add any additional dates out there for uh, a pickup for these items? Yeah, I think we're, we're going to grab onto the date uh, you've established okay. uh, for the uh, personal belongings return. Okay. So, and I'll just I'll just work along uh, side you, and we'll see if we can get it knocked out on that same evening. Perfect. Five to seven. That's that's Wednesday, Wednesday. May thirteenth, yep. from five to seven p.m. So that'll be at the uh, junior senior high school again. While we're doing our locker item pickup, if you're interested in returning your parking pass for your ten dollar deposit, stop up here Wednesday, May thirteenth, from five to seven p.m. with Officer Gunnery. Uh, Officer Gunnery, uh, any other interesting things going on out there? I know that uh, you are a big fan of sports. I know there hasn't been a lot of sports on TV, uh, any live sports at least, maybe some Korean baseball. I don't know if you're into that or not, but uh, how have you been keeping yourself busy at home? Uh, well, this uh, kind of some of the stuff we talk about off camera, uh, watching Mark the Bird Fidrich, uh, watching some of these old classic player games, man. Classic. It just brings back a lot of memories um, and just makes you hungry for, for live baseball. So. I really, really hope that this is uh, is coming a little sooner than later. I hope so too. And and for our spring sports, 
uh, we're hoping, excuse me, our fall sports, we're hoping to start, uh, you know, being able to get into some, some conditioning or some sort of practicing, but right now, again, we are under orders, strict orders from our governor, uh, so there is not a lot of gathering and not a lot of practicing or convening of those kind. Officer Gunnery, if you were out and about on the streets of Memphis here and you did see a large group gathering, how, how, does, how have you been trained to kind of handle those kind of things? Well, we're, you know, we're at a crossroad here to where, like, St. Clair County especially, things are really flattening out. You know, yeah. I think in the last two days we've had five new cases, okay. which is basically... Good, it's a good news. Very, very low number. So, you still want to let, let everybody know, practice the spacing, you know, don't congregate in big groups because that, that is how it's going to get spread. Um, but with that being said, you know, the numbers are flattening, so that means we've been doing our part as, as an area, our, our you know, community here, we're doing our part, so, and it's showing by the numbers. So just need to continue to be vigilant, be smart, and just in, in your travels, just uh, use common sense, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the best way to go, go, go about it. We, social distancing, again, when we, when we do our locker clean out, when we do our parking pass exchange, we wear our gloves, we wear our masks, um, so we do, we do not want to expose anybody to anything that we could possibly be carrying or, or to be exposed to something else. Uh, so we're taking all those precautions um, when we do those pickups for those items. Um, Officer Gunnery, I want to thank you for being here today at the Lions Club. I know that this is, uh, this is not a normal scene, yep. but it is, uh, it is what we have to do to keep things going for Coffee with the Principal, correct? Always a pleasure to have Coffee with the Principal. I, 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 it's always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, sir. That's Officer Gunnery, everybody, from Memphis Police Department. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans, because love has no labels. We are back here at Coffee with the Principal. Uh, there's a couple other things we wanted to update you on before we uh, end of this segment for the for this episode. Uh, first of all, Mr. Corbett had an update for us. He wasn't able to be here today, but he wanted to first of all send his regards uh, and his uh, his appreciation out to the Memphis staff and to all the parents and students for your for the work you've been turning in, the work you've been doing uh, during this time. Uh, Mr. Corbett wanted to let you know an update on AP testing for AP students. AP testing will begin the week of May 11th through May 22nd. Please be sure, students, to check your College Board accounts. Uh, you can check those out at apstudents.collegeboard.org. You can find any updates on the testing, uh, specific times and dates of your, your, your certain tests. So make sure if you're an AP student planning on taking the AP testing this year, you go to that College Board site. Remember, you're not taking them at school this year. You're taking them at home. The tests have been reduced in time. Uh, and you'll be able to take them at your own pace. So. Uh, it, it's a great opportunity for you to earn some college credit and earn a great bump from us here at Memphis uh, for your GPA for taking that AP test. And Mr. Corbett wanted to let you know, Yellow Jackets, that just because you're not in school does not mean you can't continue to practice PBIS. You can practice PBIS at home uh, and show your Memphis pride at home in a lot of different ways, including setting expectations with your family about different areas of your house. You know that when we come to Memphis, we've got our bathrooms, our classrooms, our locker rooms, the cafeteria, we, in every section of our, our school, we have PBIS expectations. You can do the same thing at your home, in your bedroom, in the basement, in the kitchen, in the living room. What do you expect? Go through it with your parents, talk about what the expectations are, and then live those expectations while you're at home uh, during these uh, stay-at-home orders by our governor. So again, you can still practice PBIS and show your Memphis pride at home. Can you not, Mr. Rickard? Oh, of course, yeah. Practice PBIS, which is PBI and the S is social distancing? Or practicing yes, it is. PBI social distancing is what we're calling it <laughs> The S stands for social distancing. Um, obviously, if you're home with your family, you've been there for months, you know, it's kind of hard to social distance from them. But we're talking about when you go out, allow the, the proper amount of space, uh, which we are doing today. Wear the protective uh, face masking like Mr. Rickard is doing today. I've got mine as well right here, ready to slap on at any time. Uh, mine's more of a cloth version, but again, anything to cover that face is, is very important at this time, right? Right, yeah, not only to help you, but to help the people around you. If, if everybody, 
They said if everybody wears a mask in a gathering, if everybody everybody involved is wearing a mask, if one person actually has coronavirus, then everybody else only has a 1.5% chance of getting it. So wear the mask and we'll be done with this sooner than you think. Wear the mask and wash the hands. Yeah, for sure. Things. Our next section is our fact of the month. And normally for fact of the month, I like doing something, giving a fun fact that a lot of people didn't think about involving a certain holiday of that month or something like that. So for May, we did Memorial Day. And Memorial Day was actually originally called Decorating Day because Americans would pay tribute to the fallen soldiers by decorating their graves with flowers or flags. Memorial Day was originally created only to honor those who lost their lives in the Civil War. So I think, I believe it was 1971, that it, which is fairly recent given our history that they actually made it to honor all fallen soldiers. And remember, Memorial Day and Veterans Day are different in that Veterans Day celebrates our current veterans who are with us. Memorial Day honors those who have passed on. So very important to honor all of our soldiers and our military who have uh, fought for our freedom over, you know, all the hundreds of years of our history. You know, it's a, it's, I'm glad you brought that up, Mr. Mr. Ricker, because this year Memorial Day, you know, school's not in session, of course, and you, normally we don't have school. But just so you know, also students, on that Monday, you won't have lessons to complete at home during the online learning. So Memorial Day this year, just like any other school year, it's our day off, it's a holiday, it's a day of remembrance. Uh, so you won't have to complete your online learning. Um, one thing I will miss though, and I'm not sure how they're gonna do it, maybe they will or they won't, but Memorial Day parades, those were, those, that's a big thing in my family. We go to one in the, in the city where we grew up, uh, and it is, it's, it's gonna be interesting to see if they actually do it this year, if they cancel, we have not even heard yet. Yeah, that's interesting. Where'd you grow up? Uh, Sterling Heights. Sterling oh, okay. Heights, Michigan. Uh, born and raised Sterling Heights, Michigan. And, um, you know, we go to the Sterling Heights Memorial Day Parade every year outside of my old high school. Uh, and, again, we haven't heard yet it's canceled, so we're hoping maybe it will be. And if we, as long as we all practice the right guidelines, social distancing, six feet, I don't know how they can do it, but we're hoping that we can actually get out there and get some sun and, and be outside for a little bit to see it. That'd be cool. I, I always like it, too. It's uh, for Memorial Day and then the 4th of July, I always like making a big barbecue. So you like a lot of that stuff. And uh, I make a really good barbecue sauce. Really? Yeah, my own recipe. It's a Kansas City style barbecue sauce. Really good stuff. I was going to ask you, Kansas City or Nashville? I think there's two. There's the Nashville, which is the more of the water base, I think, and then the and then the Kansas City, uh, which is more of the uh, uh, spice based uh, barbecue sauce. Is that how that works? I think Nashville's a little spicier. Okay. Which I like spicy stuff too, but the Kansas City's kind of a sweeter, tangier one. Sweeter, water. that's right. Okay. Yeah, and it's uh, very good. I'm not giving away any secrets, but uh, <laughs> it's really good. Well, if you could give me a, maybe a sample of that, that for this sure, year, for, for uh, July, the 4th of July, I'd like to get a sample of my barbecue, if I could. Okay, sounds good. I'm good, I'm good with that. I can't imagine uh, a 4th of July without barbecue. No, yeah, yeah. That's the only thing I like about Kansas City. Royals are not a big fan. Right. So that's, that's... Nobody around here is a fan of the Royals. <laughs> Uh, our last segment tonight, we want to spotlight a staff member. Every, every month we spotlight someone different. We want to have special guests. We want to talk to them. Unfortunately, again, during, to our, during our, this time of social distancing and not being able to be together, uh, we did not, we're not able to bring in a guest today for our staff spotlight. But this month, we spotlight a new member of our staff. Her name is Mrs. Janine Wilkinson. Mrs. Wilkinson is our school social worker. Uh, throughout Memphis schools, K through 12. Um, and she has been here for a very short time but already made a pretty large impact on her students, correct? Oh yeah, she's great to work with. She really knows what she's doing and uh, I've heard nothing but good things about her from students, so that's... Nothing but good things. So I, but what I want to do today is just kind of read a little bit about her so you know a little bit more about uh, Mrs. Wilkinson. Uh, so she is our social worker. She attended... Michigan State. Michigan State University, the same place that our very old Mr. Rickard went to. Uh, her hobbies include cooking, hiking, traveling, and candle making, which if you know, can be very tricky if you know anything about candle making. Oh, uh, I know, we did it at like Greenfield Village. Greenfield Village, yeah, she can do it over there a lot, and I, and I, I remember doing that myself. <laughs> um, her favorite food is milk chocolate. I think they're, at this time, they're, chocolate, if you own stock in chocolate anywhere, any company, I'm assuming it's going through the roof because people are buying chocolate. Uh, eating at home, hanging out. I mean, I know I am. I need some. I don't have enough. <laughs> you don't have enough. I think right. I ate it all. So. I had to stop at Kroger on the way home. Right. Um, her favorite thing about Memphis, Mrs. Wilkinson says, Mrs. Wilkinson says the staff, the families in the community, as well as the students are her favorite things about Memphis. It's an honor for her to be a part of this amazing community, she says. 
Uh, and an interesting fact you might not have known about her, and I did not know this either. And neither did you know. And I, and I was putting together this newsletter to find out information about her. She told me something I had no clue about. But Mrs. Wilkinson lived in Okinawa for a year and a half when she was in her early 20s. She learned some Japanese while she was there, but unfortunately today she can't remember much, if any, of it. Hey, at least she lived there for a year and a half. That's pretty cool. I've never even been to... I've never been outside the U.S. or Canada, but... Uh, well, no, no uh, Jamaica, Mexico, anything like that? No. Nothing. Uh -huh. Mr. Rickard, you got to do some traveling. <laughs> Most of my travels are based on uh, watching sports teams. Watching sports. <laughs> well, maybe... <laughs> who knows? Maybe one day you can go see one of the Japanese baseball or Korean baseball. Oh, yeah. They're playing. We just yeah. talked about that, Mr. Uh, Officer Gunnery and I just talked about that. That's true. That's true. Bat Flip uh, City over there. They, are, they really throw those bats on it. You know, and I was thinking of even getting involved in a... Korean baseball fantasy team. Too. Oh, geez. Yeah, I don't know, but we'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> so that is all we have today for Coffee with the Principal. I want to thank our earlier guest, Officer Gunnery, for being here and get, getting us some information about our parking permits and other things around Memphis. I also want to uh, take a second to thank Mr. Rickert for being here. Mr. Rickert, I know it's not easy to get out, and we're, again, we're all trying to uh, practice these social distancing measures. We all want to be safe. We all want to be healthy. Uh, so I thank you for making it out here today. Oh yeah, of course, of course. I had to see, I had to see these guys again. You know, I, I miss everybody. So always great to get out and uh, excited to start doing some more things once the restrictions are lifted a little bit. Yes, it is. And, and uh, over the past couple of days, we've seen a lot of students and parents come in for locker pickup, uh, and uh, it's just it's just amazing to hear them say how much they want to be back, and and, and I and I do miss them too. And I you miss the parents, students, staff, everyone, you know, just being part of it every day. It's, it's, it's hard to not, not be part of it. Yeah. yeah, I know, I know. I miss it all the time. Remember that next week, Wednesday, May 13th, from 5 to 7 p.m., you can come, junior high or senior high school students, pick up locker items in the Circle Drive at the Junior Senior High School. Also, Officer Gunner will be there to collect parking passes, uh, and he will refund your $10 deposit. That is next week, May 13th. Well, that is all the time we have today for Coffee with the Principal. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and we will see you soon. Stay safe and have a good day.